it's a very simple book and so the style of writing is also very simple. So very simply it's Indian and Bobo find each other. With Soha's influence in my life, I kind of took to reading. Kunal has a very inventive mind. You know, he often goes to sleep and dreams up stories with climaxes and interval points. But there's a different romance involved with reading a book and you know, holding a book in your hand and flipping through those pages. Kunal was saying in an interview we did recently how your brain is completely passive when you're watching content on TV but it's engaged when you're reading a book. Yeah, so and I, like you said, it's been what, 14 years now? So I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Midday.com. Joining us are a couple who are not just partners for life but co-authors as now. So hi Soha and Kunal. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Congratulations for your book firstly. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. And please tell us how the idea came about. It's beautiful you all are writing a book in the digital age when kids are hooked to phones. So it's interesting because uh, you know with, with the Inaya Soha used to very early on, so I introduced books and you know reading to her and even though she still can't read actually but she understands most of it but even when she she couldn't understand it she would look at the pictures and she would enjoy the stories that were told uh, and I would often try and make up stories uh, so I wouldn't take books but I would like come up with stories imagine stories and then we started playing a game where she would uh, give me three characters or four characters that she wanted in a story and I would try and weave a story around it and one such story was about a girl who went to an adoption center and adopted a, a puppy and uh, I remember a couple of times when I would tell her story she said why can't I see the pictures like I can see with the other when the mama tells me a story and that's when I actually spoke to Soha and I said should we find an illustrator to maybe just do one or two books of the stories that I tell her and uh, it was Soha's idea who said that why don't we actually think about a children's books because you know a lot of kids might enjoy the stories that you tell her and we should write a, a story book which is meant for everybody and that's how Ini and Bobo came by yeah <laughs> yeah that's a very interesting title in fact so please tell us about that like how did you all decide on the title well essentially it's about I mean they're the primary characters Ini and Ini is certainly inspired by Inaya yeah. uh, which is why Ini and Bobo actually the reason why Bobo is called Bobo is in the book um, so we'd like you to read it to find out and um, that's the title of what we hope will be a series. Uh, we've already written the second and we're working on the third and we think that the potential is unlimited in terms of the adventures that the two of them can go on. But this is the first one and this is where they find each other. So it's a very simple book and so the style of writing is also very simple. So very simply it's Indian and Bobo find each other. And you guys of course have adopted four puppies in Patodi and uh, there's nothing like growing up with the, anim with the pet you know. So, uh, were you all always avid uh, pet lovers? Please tell us about your own experience. I was. I, I used to love animals from an early on age and I, I, I was not allowed to have pets for a very long time until one day I actually just got a pet dog and took her home and I remember my mother had a big fight with me and she was like, I'm not going to look after it. But obviously, you know, it was a matter of like a week or two and then my mother fell in love with it more than I did. So yeah, I mean, I've always liked to have animals in, in around my life and uh, uh, unfortunately, I lost uh, Masti uh, in November, who was with me since 2008. Uh, but I think that's what's kind of kept Inaya also in in line with that, you know, because she also loves animals, whether it's dogs, cats, rabbits, and we've tried to spiders. Kind of she likes chipkalis. <laughs> she likes all animals. And we try to inculcate that, you know, to to respect nature and and love animals. And there's a beautiful message: adopt, don't shop. So. Yeah, please tell us about that because that's definitely something people need awareness about. Yeah. So, I mean, we uh, both believe in adopting. Uh, there are there's a huge dog and cat and other animal population that are strays. Certainly, in a city like Mumbai, you see them all around you that need homes. Um, so, when there is such a supply of really cute fur balls, uh, you know, why shop when you can adopt and give them homes? We've worked with many organizations like Frenticos in Delhi and very closely with uh, World for All, which is an NGO based out of Mumbai that actually rescue and rehabilitate and rehome um, stray dogs and animals. And, uh, you know, that's where we would tell you to turn to if you're looking to get a pet. You, of course, have had a book release before, which was really successful. The Perils of the Moderately Famous. How did you get Kunal on board? We need to know that story. <laughs> um, you know, we've joked about this in the past, uh, that I'm, I'm good with non-fiction, but not so good with creative writing and uh, fiction. And I think that Kunal has a very inventive mind. You know, he often goes to sleep and dreams up stories with climaxes and interval points. Uh, and as he told you, he came up with the story. And he also wrote the skeleton of, you know, the first of this Indian Bobo. So it was essentially his story that I've worked with him on. And now we've, of course, co-authored it and I've given it the form of a, a publishable story. Um, but uh, it wouldn't have been possible uh, alone. 
that's a great combination we are looking forward to it and were you all both readers as kids any favorite books that you all remember she's definitely way more uh, of a reader than i was i actually didn't enjoy reading much as a kid in fact i remember even the books that i liked were picture books because i wouldn't read them i would go through the pictures and even comics for me were, were like that and i was always more attracted to the audio visual format of uh, storytelling but uh, i did kind of read a few books as a kid but uh, i think with soha's influence in my life i kind of took to reading uh, i think initially just to compete with her uh, but then i did I, I, but there's a different romance involved with reading a book and you know holding a book in your hand and flipping through those pages no and like i said you know in the digital age uh, kids are uh, more focused towards technology and even you know like maybe something like playing outside has kind of uh, stopped so do you all have any set rules as parents restricted screen time or something that you know is important to you all Absolutely, we have uh, uh, restricted screen time. You know, I think everything has to happen in moderation. Anything in life has to happen in moderation. So, from a young age, we wanted to introduce her to the joys of reading, because there is a discipline behind it. Also, it is much easier to sit back and watch a movie. And Kunal was saying in an interview we did recently how your brain is completely passive when you're watching content on TV, but it's engaged when you're reading a book. You know, there's actually something happening. You have to imagine what what's happening. You know, because everything is spoon fed to you when you're watching on television. True. Uh, but when you're reading, you're kind of painting that picture. I mean, this is a picture book, so you know you're you're watching it and you're imagining. But when you read a normal book which doesn't have pictures in it, it makes your brain go in different places and imagine how it would have happened. And I think it makes you more expressive as a person. It helps you to be more creative, uh, and also then you'll never be bored because you know you really can. There's unlimited literature out there for you to immerse yourself in. Um, in terms of rules. it's very difficult uh, to set rules beyond a point especially when you have uh, a child who is more than 4 years old because they make up their own minds so the idea was to set the foundation early so that she actually enjoys reading we leave lots of books around her in her playroom in her bedroom and one ritual that we have is bedtime reading so before you go to bed about 15 minutes of reading books of her choice of short length because we don't want it to go on for <laughs> more than half an hour and you know from dating to 7 years of marriage and of course parenthood so how do you feel your relationship has also evolved and of course being co-authors now it's, it's a question that it's it's tough to answer this question because there were different times in life when we answered this question and we generally hadn't uh, answer for it but i think it like you said it evolves and you get comfortable in 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 your skin and it becomes like second nature right because now that you say that oh you guys have been together and how did it work and how does it work i it's very tough to say because i think every relationship takes work whether it's uh, your relationship with your parents or your uh, you know or your sister siblings uh, i think uh, with so when i like you said it's been uh, 14 years now so i guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't know how to define it anymore because i just i'm very happy where i am and uh, we're blessed that we managed to find our way through ups and downs in our relationships and of course we are sure inaya has read the book so what was her reaction she um i think was very excited to see it in its final version because it took about a year to come together you know from when kunal narrated it to her to when we actually presented her with the book which was about a couple of weeks ago uh and of course she sees herself in any yeah she's most excited she about that she was most excited and they're just learning in school about you know stories and what is the hero so she goes around saying i'm the hero of this book because i save everybody <laughs> um and uh, so it's it's nice to it's also nice for her to see the process of becoming an author and a book being published and kids today are of course you know exposed to issues that i think we never knew when we were um, you know kids even serious issues maybe like right from you know something like lgbtqia rights to maybe even multicultural marriages which all are your beautiful example of yourself so is there something coming up for older kids as well you know like maybe something um, I think what's happened now is people are talking more in a way that they didn't. These issues always existed, but perhaps people didn't feel comfortable expressing themselves. And now I'm happy to say that uh, when it comes to literature, there's a lot out there. Whatever issue you want to deal with, whether it's a good diet, whether it's bedtime, whether it's toilet training, whether it's introducing your child to different structures of marriage um, or families, there's a book already out there. Um, so there's already. I don't know if we have any plans. I think for, for us, because even we weren't sure. We never planned to write this. The motivation was from Inaya. So to answer your question, I mean, I, like right now we don't know. Right now we're just uh, happy that we kind of did this. Uh, and maybe when she's growing up, and if you're telling her stories about that and talking about that, and if you feel motivated, and if I have a story and we have a story jointly to tell, then why not? Uh, because like I said, if five years ago you asked me, are you going to write a children's book? I would have said no. Yeah, and finally, of course, we also have to ask you. You know, parenthood can be quite intimidating for a new couple. So, anything that you guys learned from your experiences that you'd like to share with uh, maybe new parents? I uh, learned a lot, and it's a constant learning process. Um, I became very immersed in motherhood. 
to a point where I did lose my own identity uh, and my other, in you know, passions and pursuits. And it took a while for me to find that balance. I think that I'm on that journey now where I'm recognizing what's important for me as an individual, what my other responsibilities are, what my other joys are, and I'm able to achieve more of a balance in life. I just think because there's so much, again, there's literature about everything out there and, you know, advice is something that's for free, so everybody likes to give it. Uh, but I just feel that you have to find your own way. Every child is different. Uh, there is no one correct method of doing anything. Uh, at some point, you have to listen to your own child and understand what they want. And, and instinctively, I think there are too, so many things that instinctively as a parent, when you kind of, you know, transcend to that part of your life, uh, you know of things to do and not to do. So not necessarily do you have to feel pressured or bothered by saying, no, you know, this book said this, or, you know, my mom said this, or this aunt said this, and this is what I have to do. So don't uh, pressurize yourself because it's a tough journey for both parents who are doing this for the first time. Thank you so much. And of course, we are hoping your book is a big success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, so, thank much. you so much. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.